guys, I am working on another little watercolor painting, and it's this one. Uh, it's been a while since I've done just a portrait painting, so I thought that would be fun. I can use up one of my little square panels. And uh, this is the sketch that I'm working on, if you can see it a lot clearer there. I'm really excited about it. There's going to be some little abstractions that I can apply at the very end, so there's going to be some room to just play with this piece. It will open up a lot of fun little little things I can test out, but it is actually adhered to an artist grade panel. This is what I do to almost all of my watercolor paintings now. I get questions about that actually a lot. It's uh, just matte medium on top of an artist panel and then my watercolor paper that I've already transferred my sketch over, if you can see that, hopefully. But anyways, I use a light box, transfer it onto my watercolor paper, and then with matte medium, I glue it right down to the artist panel. And that means that when I'm painting on this, the paper stays completely flat, warp-free. It's the perfect surface to paint on. I love it. And when I'm done, it means that it feels really substantial and solid. And I love that, having a finished watercolor painting that just feels really solid. But anyways, let's start painting this. I love working on pieces like this, just really simple portrait paintings. It's fun to find ways that I can make it a little bit more interesting, look for special little details to put at the end of it, things that can be added to make the character feel a little bit special. But overall, the concept and the content of the piece is so simple. It's just so enjoyable to sit down and be able to just enjoy the process of creating a watercolor painting. So that was really what I was thinking going into this one. I wanted to do another portrait piece that I could just get lost in and enjoy experimenting with a couple of different techniques that I wanted to practice a little bit more of. And I just had a lot of fun working on this. It was really pleasant to be able to just work on something like this that, that I've done in the past. And it's really simple, simplifies things. And I love painting faces. So sometimes I think as artists, we feel this need to, to separate ourselves from the things that we really love painting because we feel like we need to challenge ourselves more and more. And I agree with that. I, I want to challenge myself more and more, but there's something about just going back to the basics of what you really love painting and indulging in that. So one thing that I was trying to get a little bit better at with this piece, and I have a long way to go, and that's handling wet on wet washes a little bit better. So I love them, I use them, but not very strongly. They're not like a huge component to the way that I approach my watercolors. and. I, I feel like it's a, a very useful tool that I'm leaving on the table by not getting more comfortable with it so that I know how to use it better. I think that probably my biggest issue that I have with wet on wet is that I think that I tend to lay down a lot of water or the, the first color wash that I put down and I immediately go in with the other color that I want to introduce. And I think that the issue with that is that there's so much water on top of my paper that when I add that that secondary pigment, it just kind of bleeds everywhere. It's just kind of gone and it creates this very large shape rather than saying a little bit more contained, just softening into that other color. And uh, I've been thinking about that a little bit more. And I think that it's just, I think I need to let it that first wash or that first layer of just water, whatever the case is, I think I need to let it settle into the paper a little bit and become more of a damp water consistency than wet. I don't know. This is just a theory. I need to do a few more tests on my scrap pieces of paper before I really understand whether that is that correct theory or not. But but anyways, overall, that's something that I'd really love to be able to have a stronger control over. That's, that's the thing that I feel I'm really lacking in when it comes to watercolors is that Watercolors can be so soft and intermingling and I love that effect and I haven't really gone to the point where I can control it in a way that creates effects that I want. I would love to be able to add blush better or like a red nose and lips specifically in this piece. I wanted to have a really soft, hazy edge to it so that it wasn't like a, a strong delineation between her lip and her skin or the rest of her face. I wanted it to soften into that and that wasn't nearly as successful as I would have liked, which is okay. It just means that it's space for me to practice more. And Golden, which is the name of this piece, is available as a print or as the original. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there if you're interested. And retrospectively, looking back at it, I 
I do wish that I had made her skin just a little bit warmer, a little bit more golden. I wanted everything else to have a hint of this yellowy glow to it. So her eyes are yellow and orangey colored, which is really fun to paint. And her hair, while it is green, I wanted it to be a little bit more yellow green around her face. So it almost has this like radiating glow. And overall at the end, I really love how all the colors come together and the effect, but I think that just adding that little extra pop of warmth would help everything feel a little bit more harmonious, cohesive, it would help that, that kind of glowy lighting source that I, I wanted to hint at. I think that would have made it just feel a lot more present and there. I love painting this hair so much. It was just really fun to do the wet on wet for this hair. I found that it definitely was more successful than the skin wet on wet, so that was nice, but I just, I loved watching the pigments granulate together. That's one of my favorite things when it's in an area that I really specifically want granulation to happen. It's just magical to watch the watercolor do that. <laughs> it just feels like something that's far more of play and fun when I get to do wet on wet with granulating pigments like this. It was just, it was a blast. I had a lot of fun building up the different greens so that it became this, uh, this subtle mix of warmer greens and cooler greens. And I just really loved that. And I did really enjoy making sure that there was like this halo around her face with that more golden green color. I'm trying to be more, more present with the way that I, I do these more subtle shifts in colors. I, I do tend to have a habit of just thinking this thing is blue and this thing is green or this thing is gray. And there's just so much more variation that I could put into everything. So I'm trying to be a little bit more present and aware of that and looking for areas that I can just add a little bit more variation and interest to it, specifically areas that can add a little bit more information as far as the lighting or if there's another color that's close by, it can influence it a little bit more. I don't know. I'm just, I'm really enjoying being more aware of, of more technical things that I can be doing with my watercolors. And then it was time for me to pull out my gouache. I've been really in love with this process. I actually, depending on the piece, will will do line work earlier, depending on where it is and how anxious and excited I am for seeing an area really sharpened and cleaned up. That's really one of the things that I love about the acrylic gouache is that it's almost waterproof. It's very water resistant. So once I put it down, I can paint next to it and it will pretty much not budge. So it's not going to bleed into the watercolor. Like when I used to use watercolor for line work, it was, that was it. That was the final step. I couldn't do anything next to it. So this is really fun. There's just a lot more give and take with the process. And I love that. But overall, I just, I love doing the line work with the squash now that I figure out the right consistency for it so that I can still get an opaque line, but it's really smooth and it just flows off the brush really easily. That's definitely the step that I think transforms any of my pieces. <laughs> it tends to look really messy and has low contrast or lower contrast than I'd like. And then when I go in and add my line work, everything just gets tighter and cleaner and sharper. And that's what I want. I want the line work to be a really significant part of each piece. So that's really fun. <laughs> it's definitely the step that I usually look forward to the most because it just makes the whole piece pop and I love doing it. It's really satisfying. Painting the highlights in her hair by far though was my favorite step <laughs> more than the line work for everything else. That was just so much fun that I wasn't really sure exactly how it ended up looking but it made it look really glossy and shiny and I loved that and I struggle a lot with preserving highlights in watercolors. I just I tend to paint over the areas. I get really just in the zone with painting that I forget to leave them. And I, I love highlights and I would love the option of adding in the highlights. I don't like leaving it as a negative. I would rather add the highlight as a positive. So that's one of the many, many reasons why I love using the gouache with watercolors is that I get to go back in and add highlights. And I love that additive process. It's just so, so fun to finish off a piece with some more pops of brightness. But but yeah, going back in on her hair, I feel like that really just transformed it. It was really fun to do that. I went in with more of a yellow and a little bit darker, but still really light green. And I established more of the overall highlight. And then I went in with an almost white 
and put that pop like right in the center of each of the highlights and that I think really created a little bit more of a realistic and colorful highlight to her hair. And then I added in those little abstractions, I guess you could call them. I wanted them to match her eyes and have almost like a glittering gold effect, but they're not gold, they're just flat gouache, but I loved adding those. I love looking for little details like that, that I can break certain areas, like um, the line on her lash line. Eventually I go in and add a few little dots that, that break over that edge. And I think that it just creates a little bit more dimension. You know, it's more interesting to look at and it's more interesting to paint. I love, I love being able to do that layering details within a painting. It just brings it to life a little bit more. And don't forget the print of Golden is available at my shop as well as the original painting. There's that link down in the description that'll take you over there. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I loved painting her. I love watercolor painting. I just have been really missing it lately, but but yeah, thank you guys as always for watching. Thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. So thank you for all of your support. And uh, that's it for today. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.